Okay, we're live on YouTube. Uh, Patrick, I think you can go ahead whenever you're ready. And are you recording this session, Kevin? Now I am, yes, sir. Okay. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for taking some time out of your day to join us here for the Auburn Gresham Community Roundtable. This is our seventh meeting, um, our seventh roundtable and our eighth overall meeting. And today is a one agenda item um, discussion where we are going to present the sole respondent to the um, 83858 West 79th Street RFP. But before we begin, it is my pleasure to introduce our commissioner for more formal remarks. Let me um, announce Maurice Cox, commissioner. Hi, hi, uh, Patrick, uh, thank you and uh, welcome. I'm um, just so thrilled to be joining you all on this uh, for this meeting um, for the city's uh, response to the um, request for proposals for West 79th Street in Auburn Gresham. So thank you all for tuning in. Um, as you may know, this opportunity site uh, is consists of six parcels vacant land uh, that's owned uh, by the city. Um, through this very community driven RFP process, I think in coordination with Alderman Moore's office and the Auburn Gresham kind of resident, residential community, um, our goal is pretty simple. We wanna restore this section of West 79th Street uh, to its rightful role uh, as kind of a critical shopping corridor, mixed use, pedestrian oriented destination uh, the, the front door really to the community. So this site was amongst uh, the first uh, sites identified for redevelopment under Mayor Lightfoot's Invest Southwest initiative. Uh, it's also directly across the street uh, from the Greater Auburn Gresham uh, Development Corporation's planned healthy lifestyle hub, uh, which uh, is being developed uh, with the city's assistance and was the, the winner of the Chicago Prize. So our site was chosen because of its strategic location across the street from the Healthy Hub and near the intersection of uh, 79th and Halstead and uh, just blocks away from the planned 79th Street uh, Metro Station. So the city um, is really excited because we've never approached a development opportunity with such a community driven approach. Um, and this is a, an occasion where you get to meet the developers at the same time that I meet them. Um, you get to weigh uh, the opportunity for how they responded to the community's vision for Auburn Gresham. And so I'm just really grateful uh, and excited uh, by your presence this afternoon and want you to know that you are an integral part of this process. And we look forward to your comments, uh, both during this session uh, and after the meeting. So thank you again for your participation and your commitment to the future of 79th Street. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, as the Commissioner stated, we have a lot going on here. Um, but we also have a very hard stop here today at 5.30, and we believe that one hour is going to be enough time for the development team to present this wonderful opportunity to the community and uh, also offer sufficient time for questions and answers uh, by you, the stakeholders and, and folks in the community who are here joining us live this evening uh, on this DPD channel. So without further ado, let us continue. Um, here's our agenda. We are in our overview and welcome right now. Again, thank you for coming and joining us. We're going to quickly recap uh, where we are, how we got here, and a little bit about our site. And then it is our pleasure to introduce this evening uh, a moderator that will help us facilitate the, the session here this evening, as well as introduce our development team. And then we'll close out by going over some next steps and things to look out for in the immediate future. As you all know, this is a wonderful development opportunity and opportunity site that the commissioner also spoke about earlier at 838 uh, 
to 58 West 79th Street. This is just a block um, west of Cottage on 79th Street in this critical Invest Southwest commercial corridor. Our goal here is to imagine and reimagine West of, you, west of Halstead, not Cottage. Yeah, west of Halstead, my apologies. Thank you, thank you. I'm on the other side. Uh, reimagine underutilized uh, city-owned land in the heart of our progression. Uh, for many of you who live in this community, work and play, you know this lot has been vacant for over 20 years and it's a wonderful um, thing here that we are combining our efforts together to, to bring about change in this um, neighborhood. Um, we need your feedback on this proposal. And so today you'll help us select um, the right development proposal. What we hope to accomplish today is, one, we're gonna meet our team, we're gonna learn more about the proposal, and we're gonna ask questions and get feedback from you. So again, I wanna recap our RFP, how we got here, where we are today. We'll introduce our developer team. We'll have time for questions and answers. And then we'll also um, look at the next steps in our continued community engagement uh, process, which has been so critically uh, valuable to the Invest Southwest initiative. And that'll all be led by our facilitator, who you'll meet later. This is our evaluation team. We have a number of people looking at this RFP citywide, uh, a lot of uh, uh, you know, good people looking at this uh, proposal. We'll get more into that later. So how did we get here? As you know, we have embarked upon an unprecedented level of engagement with the community as part of this initiative, where for many months now, since at least last summer, we've been having community roundtables talking directly to you about this site and, and our overall goals for development in this critical uh, community and corridor. We have developed an RFP. We worked with our pro bono partners, the Chicago Central Area Committee, as well as Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill, who helped us on visioning. Uh, and based on input from the roundtables, stakeholders, interviews, and all the workshops that we've done since our kickoff, um, we've been able to develop an RFP, launch it in August, and here we are with our responses. And so we were um, able to see in our first round of citywide RFPs in three community areas, 12 overall responses, of which we had one for Auburn Gresham. Um, and we began our evaluation process right now, which we are in, in step three, where we evaluated internally. And now the promise that we've made to have the community have direct input and feedback from this proposal is here in step three. Um, after step three, we will go into our um, negotiation uh, after we select a developer and then we will hopefully announce a winning respondent at our next community meeting in February. So many, let me recap the site here. This is the 800 block of West 79th Street. As you can see here, this is a 22,944 square foot site, rectangular shaped, vacant land across from the Healthy Hub um, lifestyle project being led by our community partner the Greater Auburn Gresham Development Corporation, steps away from the legendary and historic uh, St. Leo High School, and also blocks away from the soon to be um, completed Metro Station, which is a capital infra infrastructure project being undertaken by the state of Illinois. As you know, we are trying to transform the vision of 79th Street as you can see um, what, what it is right now and what we would love to, for it to be. We want to increase the density uh, with new housing and commercial development. We wanna have this site be a catalytic project that is designed in sympathetic uses with other projects going on in the area. We wanna have a holistic approach as we, as we develop a comprehensive vision for the entire site and a new plan for a new commercial corridor in this emerging community. These are some views of the existing uh, streetscape from the Southwest, as well as from the West. And then also some concepts that were developed through our visioning um, process of what the project could look like upon completion with you know, some great uh, streetscape, some great design here, uh, commercial on the ground floor, housing above, just a great walkable 
uh, block uh, with this new addition that we envision here today. So who is our respondent team? Our respondent team that we'll be presenting today is the Evergreen Imagine Joint Venture, LLC. Um, we will be introducing them in, in just a few seconds here. Uh, but this site here promises to be such a wonderful, and you all heard this uh, proposal in bare bones form back in December at our December roundtable meeting. But as I stated before, this is our full in-depth briefing with the community. So as we're looking at this presentation, here are some things to keep in mind. What is your overall impression of each of this, of this proposal? What excites you? What brings concerns to you as you hear this proposal? Is the city of Chicago and does this proposal hit the goals of our community wealth building? Do we have enough involvement of minority owned team members? Are we going to be able to promote local business development, local hiring? And does this team have previous experience developing in communities of color? Also, what we want you to look for is, does this development team have a high level of competence and appropriateness in developing in uses and spaces? Does their project, is it reflective of the community's priorities? Is their design high quality? And again, does their development team all across the board through their construction, design and management team have enough experience and abilities? These are some of the things that we want you to be thinking about as you see the presentation. How will your feedback be incorporated? Well, we will, synthesi we will synthesize um, the comments that we hear today and we will issue a report of findings to the RFP evaluation committee. We will ask you all to participate in an online survey that will be sent to you by tomorrow morning, which will solicit more feedback and have some detailed opinions that you all can fill out and complete. This uh, online survey will be open for approximately one week and close next January 28th at midnight. The findings of this survey will also be issued again to the evaluation committee and the round table. This is an iterative evaluation. As the, as the committee continues to review the proposals, we will incorporate feedback from these sessions into their approach and their work as well. And then finally, once a selection has been made, DPD will refer to the feedback from these sessions and future engagement opportunities to advance negotiations and amend the winning proposal as necessary. It is my pleasure now to introduce to you our moderator for this evening, facilitator Claudette Baker. Claudette? Hello, everyone, and thanks for your participation um, today. My brief bio is on the screen. I am a consultant to nonprofits and foundations uh, working in organizational development and training. I have worked in the for-profit, the government uh, sectors uh, for many years and am skilled in facilitating group process and look forward to moving us through uh, the time that we have uh, within this hour. Next slide. So before we get started, um, we'd seek a few agreements from you uh, with your participation today. And that is please, as I see on screen, most everybody is muted. We ask that you remain muted uh, when you're not speaking. When you do speak, please identify yourself by stating your name so that people can locate you on screen. Uh, we ask that you use the Q&A function to start the conversation. Uh, and that uh, we will pick those questions out of Q&A uh, to ask to the developers. Uh, if you're responding verbally, there is a raise hand feature that is offered in Zoom, so you can raise your hand. We'll be looking for hands raised. We also ask that you respect the stack, and that is uh, the order in which we will call. So if there are hands raised, and questions in Q&A, we try to manage that around what we see uh, first in the order. Um, we also ask that you step up and step back so everybody participates, allow others uh, to, voices to be heard. All questions and ideas are valid and that we ask that you respond with respect. As stated, we do have a hard stop at 530. And so part of my role today is uh, to get uh, to, keep the meeting moving. 
Uh, please note that if I interrupt you uh, to ask you to get to your question, uh, you know, if you're giving a lot of stories around that, that we ask for a little grace uh, with that. And so I don't plan to do a lot of talking. This is your time to give feedback on the proposals as stated. So uh, let's get started. We will start with the video presentation from Evergreen Imagine. No, you have to. Hey, Patrick, this is Luke. I don't think we're hearing the audio. Some of us are. Yeah, yeah I got yeah, it. Yeah, I'm hearing it too. Okay. Okay, are we hearing the audio across the board pretty much? Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I can it's hear. just music now. Yeah. Okay, all right, here we go. Hello, I'm Tori Bear, principal and founder of Imagine Group. On behalf of the Evergreen Imagine Joint Venture, we are excited to present our development plan, a new vision for 79th Street Corridor. The Magic Group is a boutique real estate firm with significant experience delivering innovative, affordable housing, mixed income, and market rate developments. Most recently, we completed the Clio Art Residences, a 58-unit mixed-use development in Washington Park. We have partnered with Evergreen Real Estate Group, a developer of award-winning housing and mixed-use urban projects with a focus on affordable housing. Evergreen is known for its completion of two public libraries with mixed income housing that incorporated design excellence. Our design team is comprised of Ross Barney Architects and NIA Architects. Ross Barney Architects is an internationally recognized Chicago-based design firm known for its commitment to innovation, environmental sustainability, and inclusive design. With more than 200 awards, the firm has completed notable design excellent projects, such as the Chicago McDonald flagship and the Chicago Riverwalk. Near Architects were founded by Anthony Akindeli, an African-American immigrant, and the firm is recognized for its Patrick, commitment can to you stop the video a moment? and extensive Patrick, stakeholder integration. Can you stop it a moment? Uh, we've got several comments about the bar. I think it's removed now. Try restarting. Nia's projects include the historic renovation of the Marshall Fields Gardens Apartments and the Arts and Rec Center at Ellis Park. For construction, we have included GMA Construction Group, an MBE and veteran-owned firm led by Cornelius Griggs, with a mission to develop people that will transform communities. GMA has extensive track record of delivering projects on the south and west side providing construction jobs for members of the community and exceeding participation for MWBE firms. We have also included Carno Canabair, a WBE environmental consultant. We recognize that this revitalization effort will only be successful with intensive participation by members of the community. Our team includes AO Foods, founded by my partner, Fred Spencer. AO is a rapidly growing health food company with an emphasis on West African cuisine. The brand has been rapidly adopted by major grocery chains, and the food is produced right here in Chicago. And Cleo, which I founded and named after the death of my baby sister, a 15-year-old organization with the Community Family Life Center on Garfield Boulevard, Cleo will be offering its Young Professional Academy, a group dedicated to growing future entrepreneurs. The Evergreen Imagine team will continue to connect with additional local organizations in order to build wealth in the community and maximize the impact of this project. Our goal for this design is to provide good homes in a good neighborhood for families. This design provides 56 affordable units with 40 of those being two and three bedrooms. Sustainable and healthy environments are our top goals. We want to build on the innovation of the Healthy Living Center, Chicago Prize winner across the street. And our design includes community gardens with space available for each tenant to grow healthy food for their families. 
This could be a true bonus for city dwellers. A children's playground is located on the north side of the building and creates a safe space for young residents. Together with the gardens, spaces like these let neighbors meet, get to know each other, share experiences, and develop common goals. We know that we have a lot to learn about your community, and we're eager to begin a re robust community conversation about your needs. The ideas and values that neighbors impart to a project are essential to its success. One of the first activities we plan to start is an open dialogue. In person, in real meetings would be great, but if not, we've learned a lot the past last year about communicating virtually, and we're sure that we can get to know you and you can get to know us. 79th Street is the backbone of Auburn Gresham, especially with the improving transportation options that are coming online, like the new metro station. We propose Did the video stop on your end? Yes. All right, hold on. Shum especially with the improving transportation options that are coming online, like the new metro station. We Patrick, I wonder if it's trying to load from the internet and it's buffering or something. I, I have it on my desktop if you want me to share my screen. Yeah, go ahead, I'll stop. You can right. go to the 450 mark, okay? Okay. Uh, I think you have to stop sharing so yep. I can. There you go. All right. Um, uh, let's see. Can everybody hear it? No. David, when you go to the share screen, you have to share computer audio also. All right, let me try that again. There's a checkbox. Yep. Sorry, we're all learning. <laughs> virtually, and we're sure that we can get to know you and you can get to know us. 79th Street is the backbone of Auburn Gresham, especially with the improving transportation options that are coming online, like the new metro station. We propose that these homes are the first phase of a larger initiative to provide quality retail, office, and live work spaces, as well as housing on the available parcels along 79th. This will take advantage and get the most value out of those new Auburn developments. Our team is really conscious of the role projects like this play in the revitalization of a historic neighborhood like Auburn Gresham. We believe that good design, especially in the public realm, is a right and not a privilege. That right includes the homes themselves and the public spaces that this building will create in your community. We would be honored to work on this project to restore Auburn Gresham. So this 56 unit development uh, has a total development cost of just under $20 million. Um, we are anticipating using uh, the competitive 9% low income housing tax credits from the Chicago Department of Housing 
uh, fairly substantial first mortgage uh, supported on both the residential and commercial components of the project, and uh, some uh, tax increment financing from the local TIF districts. If we shifted to a 4% non-competitive approach, it would increase the TIF by about $4.5 million, but free up those competitive tax credits for use on another Invest Southwest project. Greetings. My name is Cornelius Griggs. I'm the president and CEO of GMA Construction Group, a local minority-owned, veteran-owned business right here in the city of Chicago. GMA's mission is to develop people that will transform communities. We do this by leveraging the construction industry to provide opportunities for underserved communities on the south and west sides of Chicago. On each project we undertake, GMA hires folks directly from the community to start as carpenters and laborers on our projects. These jobs are prevailing wage jobs, making anywhere between $60 to $85 an hour. We currently employ anywhere between 10 to 15 community hires throughout the city of Chicago. They participate in certified training programs with the associated builders and contractors. They gain great employment and gainful information to help them expand in this industry. As, as an MBE, GMA has a long-standing relationship with highly skilled MBE and WBE subcontractors throughout this industry. We will maximize our participation on this project to the greatest extent possible to ensure that we are encompassing all minority, veteran, and women-owned firms throughout this city. The Auburn Gresham Opportunity is a great project for both GMA and all of its subcontracting partners. We look forward to this opportunity and hope that the City of Chicago selects our team to be the winner of this great opportunity. Thank you. Hey, thank you uh, to Evergreen. I don't see any questions that are posted in the Q&A. Do you have questions for this developer? If you would raise your hand. Ms. Baker, I did see one question that came in uh, for the development team. It was asking about the financial breakdown of the sources and uses, and they asked if they could get a copy of that because they didn't really get a chance to see it when it was displayed. So we don't have a problem sending that out. Okay, thank you. Do you have questions for the developer about their project? A reminder of uh, what um, Patrick put up earlier as to where you may want to focus about community wealth building. How familiar are they with uh, Urban Gresham or the <laughs> Southside projects? Sure, I, I could take that one. Uh, very familiar with the Southside projects. No, uh, that's not a question, Mr. Barrett, per se. I'm just asking the participants here, do they have uh, questions uh, around that? Just as a prompt for what was shown earlier. Um, there is a question now, uh, what's the percentage of hires for returning citizens? So, uh, for the permanent jobs uh, through the retail space, we're anticipating about eight uh, permanent jobs after construction. If Cornelius Griggs is on from GMA, he could answer about the uh, temporary construction jobs that will be created throughout the uh, process project. Uh, good evening. Uh, yes, I can speak to the uh, temporary construction jobs. Um, I think right now, you know, looking at the size of the project, we're probably uh, looking at anywhere between um, total construction jobs, probably somewhere between 75 uh, to uh, 80 uh, mm -hmm. total construction uh, jobs. I think new hires on this particular project, we would target anywhere it's between right of mixed uh, four to five community hires for these opportunities. I will say that, you know, the bulk of our community hires uh, that we that we bring on on both the south and west sides of Chicago, you know, 99 percent of them are returning citizens. Um, so. Um, it's it's a focus of mine. Uh, I grew up uh, in, in neighborhoods uh, just like Arvin Gresham throughout the city. Uh, I have family that are returning citizens as well. So it's important to make sure that our organization are providing uh, these great paying jobs uh, to those individuals. 
uh, what projects have been done in relation to this project? Not sure. Sure. So Tori Barrett, again, of Imagine Group. So this project is a uh, 56 unit uh, development. Uh, we actually just completed, Imagine Group just completed a 58 unit development very similar to this building on the corner of 55th and uh, Michigan in the Garfield, on Garfield Boulevard in the Washington Park community. And, and just like Cornelia stated, uh, longtime resident of the South Side, uh, worked in Auburn Gresham as well as uh, Washington Park uh, for a very long time. And so uh, our development partner also has very experience, as we stated in the video, of projects of this similar size. Okay. Uh, is there an opportunity for realtors in the Auburn Gresham neighborhood to be involved, to get involved? Absolutely, not just realtors, but other business owners and entrepreneurs in the Auburn Gresham uh, area. We would. Uh, this is the first uh, of many uh, meetings that we anticipate having with the community and with local business and stakeholders uh, there in Auburn Gresham. So, absolutely, there's. Um, um, it will be available for realtors to be involved. Can you um, restate the breakdown of unit sizes and the breakdown of mixed income? units, low income versus market rate? Sure, and I'll have uh, David correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a total of 56 units. Uh, 42 of the units will be ones and two bedrooms and all 56 uh, will be affordable. Uh, I, can be, I can be more precise than that. We have six, 16 one bedrooms, 24 two bedrooms and 16 three bedrooms. So this is really oriented towards families. Right, and Tori is correct that this is a this is 100% affordable development. So related to affordable, what does affordable mean? So we've structured this project um, as uh, targeting families at or below 60% of area median income. So what that means is for uh, a single person, that's a, uh, a person earning less than about $38,000. Um, for uh, something, say a, a, a single mom and two kids, it's uh, income less than $49,000. Uh, is the goal to bring uh, businesses to the area? Uh, well, not just to bring, yes, there is a goal to bring businesses to the area, but also to um, help create entrepreneurship in the area as well. So we do have letters of intent from uh, two local businesses. One is the Park Supper Club. Uh, the owners of the park also own the uh, M Lounge and Persona in the South Loop, and they have um, expressed interest in opening up a similar uh, restaurant and private event space in the Auburn Gresham area. And the other one is the uh, Sports Shed, which is a um, a nonprofit uh, sporting goods store, similar to like a, a uh, Dick's, uh, where they take donations from uh, major corporations and then they resell uh, the slightly used uh, sporting good equipment to um, local schools and nonprofits at a discount. There is a question about um, how to become involved as a realtor, but is there someone, uh, do you have contact information that they could reach out about this uh, through the call? Could you put it in the chat? Sure, I'll put my contact information in the chat. Okay. Um, what skills are required and are there opportunities for training persons with the required skills? That may be a follow-up also. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're talking about on the construction side, but Yes. Okay. So if you would put contact for both of those, um, what's the management strategy after completion of the project? So typically, uh, you know, one of the things that we like to do with our development projects is to find a local uh, property management firm uh, that's experienced in, in the area, but has experience with uh, light tech, uh, low income housing tax credit, um, projects. And so if there is a, a, a local, we would partner them with uh, one of the firms that we've used in the past or that uh, Evergreen has used in the past. Again, it's all about building capacity for local entrepreneurs and, and firms that have been working in that particular area. How many commercial spaces will be available? So right now, Gerardo here. Um, 
Would it be possible to maybe pull up the ground floor plan and, and walk us through that, given that there's a couple questions that relate to this a little bit? To the commercial spaces? Yeah. Is that the, the plan that you want to see? Yeah, it might be easier for folks to visualize it that way. David, do you want us to do that? I have it if you need it. Yeah, yeah go ahead, Carol. That'd be great. You guys can show that. Okay. Kevin, can you allow her to share the screen? Thank you. Should be able to. Uh, okay, here we go. I hope this works. No, nope. I'm not being allowed to share, so. Yeah, it, it worked. Oh, yeah. did it? Okay, great. It's not showing up on my computer, but here you go. Is it there? Yep. Okay, this is the first floor plan. So the question is how many commercial spaces are available? Well, right now we're showing um, we're showing retail spaces for a total of about 3,000 square feet. Um, we have divided them into two pieces um, now, but I think that um, part of our concept for this building is that we can accommodate more retail if if we can uh, if um, it's desirable, and we can cut back a little bit. Um, also, on the first floor, we have enclosed parking, uh, residential parking. You can see it here. Um, I think we have a total of, of um, 35 spaces altogether. The second floor, if you want to see the typical apartments, this is a typical floor plan. Um, and you can see the mix. We have um, the two bedrooms are shown in this sort of uh, darker blue. And then the gray is the three bedroom. And then our, our one bedroom unit is um, shown in the light blue. Uh, we don't have any studios or any, um, you know, more. Um, I don't know, more transient types of, of units in the building. Do you want me to leave that up or, or should I put it down now? You should take it down, please. Okay. Thank you. Um, please elaborate on the green sustainable features that you plan to uh, have in the living spaces. Carol, you want to take that one as well? Uh, sure. I'd be glad to. We're going, um, it's, the building will be designed as sustainably as we possibly can. And I think what it means for the tenants is they can expect high quality. Uh, the, the major objective will be to do really energy efficient, a really energy efficient um, uh, building envelope. So I think what the residents can expect are high quality windows and draft free living spaces. Um, we are really interested in providing some um, sustainable features on site also. And in our, in our uh, proposal, we showed community gardens. I don't know if that is the answer the community wants, but I think what that does do is it tells you what the spirit of the development is. We want this to be able to be a healthy building to, um, to complement the efforts of, um, of the Healthy Living Center, Chicago Prize winner across the street. And, um, for us, that sounded like a really good idea. We need your input. It would be great if you could have a community garden here and also do, you know, provide healthy food. Um, we have looked at some other options and such as solar panels, and we will undertake those if, um, if we can make those work economically. I think we probably can. Okay. Is there specific criteria other than income for screening the residents and who will do that screening? Yeah, there's a a, um, a stringent uh, criteria that comes along with um, residents that occupy uh, low-income housing tax credit uh, projects, and the property management firm uh, will be responsible uh, for screening those tenants. Uh, David, I don't know if you want to add anything else to that. Uh, no, it's it's uh, there's typically a process that we have to follow. We create um, both a tenant selection plan and an affirmative fair housing marketing plan. And the marketing plan aspect of it uh, is sort of where we reach out to let people know about opportunities to rent an apartment at the building. So um, the, the focus here will likely be um, directly in the Arbor and Gresham community, uh, local churches, uh, local restaurants up and down 79th and Halstead, uh, 
you know, to make sure that people know that uh, when apartments are available for rent, that they can apply. How will the project help local residents who are interested in starting a business? And let me also acknowledge that Alderman Moore, I see your hand. I'll come to you shortly. Yeah, again, you know, I think uh, as we stated in the previous uh, just responses that we're all about entrepreneurship. And so hopefully uh, I know through GMA, they have a, um, a training program that helps entrepreneurs start their businesses as far as well, not all the uh, paperwork that's necessary for that, but through um, Clio, our nonprofit arm that we've been working with, um, we also do a lot of entrepreneurship uh, training to allow folks to start the business. So that that's it depends on what that business is and what their experience is in it. But uh, I did put my contact information in the um, chat. So please reach out if, if that's a uh, need of yours. Okay. Uh, will the architect incorporate a design that communicates the AG's Healthy Hubs terracotta facade along with Leo uh, High School's design? I think maybe um, we should make sure Anthony uh, has a chance to uh, opine on this. You know, we have two architects on this project, uh, Carol Ross Barney's firm and Nia Architects with Anthony Akindeli. And Anthony's been a, a pretty key part of this design process. Right, uh, Anthony Akindeli, again, in terms of the use of the material, we are gonna be working with the community and the older men to make sure that the materials that we are Speaking for this building will be uh, comfortable to what is in the community, as well as make sure that uh, the materials are more affordable to the uh, to the developer, because again, we do not want to uh, design something that the, the developer cannot afford to, to build. So we're looking at every materials that are available, and we are coming back to you in addition to the other men to make sure that we are spec in the material comparable to the buildings in the in the community. Um, there is a comment that's in the Q and A that I just want to acknowledge about: Are there other supporting roles for bidding out? And this person is giving you a little bit of their expertise that they have to offer. So, in general, the question is: Are there supporting roles that you'll be bidding out? Yes. And, and again, if they could contact me with their uh, by a company profile, that would be uh, helpful. Okay, Alderman Moore. Thank you, thank you all. Uh, did somebody say we have a hard stop at 5.30? Yeah, yes, so at about oh. 5.25, we'll turn it over for a wrap up. For what? For wrap up. Okay, so let me, let me chime in before that hard stop um, comes. First of all, um, to the residents that spe specifically at the 17th Ward, but also just in the Arvin Gresham uh, community area. Um, this is a good team um, that has been uh, assembled, people that I've um, worked with and seen um, their work um, in the past, um, especially as it relates to um, uh, Tory Barrett and the great work he's doing um, around um, 55th and Garfield. Anthony Akindalay, one of the um, greatest architects, I believe, in my opinion, in this city, um, and as well as GMA Construction, um, um, a development company that has um, grown um, from the grassroots of where we want development companies um, to grow from. But as I, as I stated, and I want to be clear just to my, um, uh, my constituents, and as this relates and impacts the 17th um, Ward community, let's be, I want to be clear to them based on where we started out and we show certain designs, uh, we're not final on the design. Is that correct? I wanna make that clear to the uh, community, yeah. right? That is correct. That's correct. Right, so, so um, they showed you all some options at the beginning. And so the design is not um, final yet. And that's where some of you all's input um, can come, as well, um, come in as well. Um, I've already talked to them and expressed my concerns about some of the design stuff. They're going to go back and, and address those. And so I guess where I, reason, where I chimed in, because when somebody asking for financials, those financials can be predicated upon that design. And so, uh, and, and I don't want somebody giving numbers out that 
may not be accurate if the design isn't uh, properly finished. So I just want to be mindful of that. Number um, two, uh, uh, Tori, did you, the, the two companies that you said, was that an either or or a possible both for the um, for the sports store and for the park supper club? Is that a possible both or was that an either or? No, that, that's the uh, possible both. Are okay. you all hearing me? I hear okay. Yeah, you were breaking up a little, but I heard you. Definitely. I you yeah, you can repeat it. You can restate it. Yes, both firms have committed uh, if we are selected for this project of occupying that space. That is great because uh, I know one of the things definitely we've heard out of this community is that those nice sit down places and place more places to have some um, um, entertainment um, venues or places where they can sit down. So I appreciate you um, working hard to bring that in there. So that's, that's all I needed to add before we got to that hard stop, just to give the residents a clear um, picture. And then if they have any other questions, um, you know, from that. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Okay. Um, how much for the community garden, how much space would each unit have available for them to use? I can address that one. Um, right now, if we gave can you every- your name? Okay. I Hi, I'm Carol Barney. I'm the architect, um, with, along with Anthony, of course. Um, if we um, gave every um, tenant the same amount, it would be about 60 square feet. So six by 10, which is um, pretty good size for a kitchen garden. But I'm, I don't know how we would administer it. I think we'd want to optimize it to the, to the largest extent so people who are interested could um, have more space and those who, who weren't so interested could have less. But that's what it comes to per unit. Um, what is or was the basis for the architectural design for this project? Um, I guess that would be mine again, unless Anthony wants to jump in on this. Um, we were interested in providing, actually, we're most interested in providing the most um, living space per unit. That was one of the, the um, one of the objectives. So um, I think our, our program came up at 56 units, and our um, idea was to optimize that for families. The other thing we were really interested in was creating um, a ground floor that could be used by the by the people who live there. Um, it was, I, I'm not sure that we have found the right uses yet, but we're really interested in creating um, community space for this building. I think um, one of the things we've noticed in our project for years is that if we can make spaces that people own and care about, the whole building does a whole lot better. So that was the other, one of the other important things about the architectural design um, was to create an active ground plane. So that's why in our proposal, we've included a children's playground in the community gardens, as well as a public plaza where you could do outdoor dining for a restaurant, for example. Uh, as far as the actual appearance we're showing you now, we aren't, we really prefer to spend time talking to people about about buildings in the area and how they feel. I know there was a comment about terracotta. Um, uh, we would like to work on this building facade till people feel that it's really well, um, it fits in their neighborhood really, really well. And so um, those are the basic ideas, the basic concepts and values that we've used to create this design. And like I said, we are, are really, we really want to talk to um, people in the community about what they'd like to see. And I also, I can, I, I can uh, add some more to that. Uh, uh, that I time. Mr. Akindeli, is that right? Yes. Uh, yes. Can, you, can you hold please for that? We have time for one more question that we need to get to. So um, I think um, Mr. Brutus will give information about follow-up for these pending questions that we're not gonna be able to get to, but there is one that's in the deck that's in, in queue that is in within this time 
and that is regarding the design of the building for post COVID-19. Are there considerations uh, given on the building code to ensure a higher level of air quality in apartments and especially in the common areas? Yeah, I guess I can start taking that. Again, uh, the design of the building post COVID, and it's uh, meaning that uh, we are making sure that the uh, air infiltration in the building is kept to the minimum and you have air circulation, air changes per hour is, is way better than, than code. And then we make sure that uh, uh, every uh, unit in the building have access to air conditioning so that it can circulate. They have uh, operable windows so that they can open windows in the, uh, during uh, uh, a nice uh, spring and fall day, but then uh, during the winter months that the air circulation, air changes is uh, uh, better than what the call calls for. And then the other thing is uh, regarding part of the inspiration for the uh, design. Uh, one of the ideas is that we want to bring the tenants uh, down to the grade level so where they can engage the community, uh, the community garden, both in the front and the rear. That again, this is a departure from most uh, mixed use building that uh, you have the whole ground floor as the retail, and then your residents uh, start on the second floor. We're trying to bring the residents down to the grade level so they can have their community guiding and it doesn't feel like uh, uh, when the retail is not there, it feel like uh, uh, all boiled up uh, uh, front, uh, front building. So every tenant have access to the community guiding on the fourth floor and it brings the tenants and it brings accessible and area to the ground floor of the building. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks everyone. I know that this was a uh, quick time. The pending questions that you have for the developers, I see that there's a note that if the developers could respond in the chat if there's time. Otherwise, um, I'm sure the Department of Planning and Development team uh, will find a way to uh, share those responses to you. The pending questions are around safety uh, figured into the design about other projects uh, that are near and what about a community center and who are the strategic partners. So again, thank you uh, for your participation and I'll turn it back over to um, Patrick Brudas. Thank you very much, Claudette. <clears throat> if we were in a uh, auditorium, I would ask for a round of applause. You did a great job. Thank you very much. Um, we had some very interesting questions. Uh, thank you for your participation, everyone. Again, this is a sacrifice to spend some of your time with us here at the city, and we appreciate you setting aside some time. Um, everybody here on this email trail that we sent out this invitation to, and those who will respond to this online survey will uh, get a complete copy of the deck, um, also the video, and we're going to do our best to uh, provide answers to all of these questions, either between the development team and or DPD. But um, the online survey is going to be a way for us to capture information that wasn't able to be asked today. And so you have an opportunity here to, to fill this form out, provide us with some input. And again, you have um, up until January 28th at midnight to uh, complete this online survey form, which I will email everyone uh, by tomorrow morning. And for you guys to, again, provide input, we see the excitement, we see the anticipation. Uh, you all heard from the aldermen, you've all heard from each other, you've heard from the development team, and we think this is a great project that will bring certainly uh, revitalization to this corridor, but also be a catalyst for future development as we continue to work uh, in this initiative to really bring about change in our commercial areas, in our neighborhoods. Next steps. Again, DPD will synthesize today's comments and incorporate them in, into an internal review process as we complete that. Uh, we will, once final materials have been reviewed, again, you heard today that the aldermen and others are also uh, looking for a little bit more in design. And so we'll be uh, hearing back from the design team at some point, uh, a winning team will be selected. And then our goal is to announce that uh, team at the next round table. Uh, we will, if we select a, winning team, we will continue negotiation proposal refinement will be advanced with additional opportunities for engagement. So we will continue to work with the team that we select here. Um, and our goal again is to 
announce a winner at our next round table, which will be February 25th. Um, and so we will see you then. So be on the lookout for an email from me with an online survey form for you to complete with uh, information from tonight's presentation. Again, it was a pleasure. Uh, thank you for doing your collective best to respect the hard stop at 530. We wanna thank our moderator and facilitator, Claudette Baker. We wanna thank our commissioner, Maurice Cox, as well as our elected officials, Alderman Howard Brookins and Alderman David Moore. As well, finally, thank you for our design team led by David Block and Tori Barrett for the Evergreen Imagine LLC. We hope to hear from you soon and we will see you guys again next month on February 25th. Thank you, happy new year and good night. Thank you. Thanks everybody. You all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Patrick. Everyone be safe. Thank you.